Hey friends, welcome back to my channel for another video. Today we're going to be posing and displaying this Mezco 112 Collective Predator. Uh, this is a great figure, I'm really excited to have it. And I have a cool idea on how I want to display them on the shelf. I think this is something that pretty much anyone can do. It's pretty accessible in terms of supplies and I think it's going to look pretty cool. So we'll get them out of the box, we'll take a look at the supplies, and then we'll get to it. Oh, I love that new Mezco smell. Uh, this thing is fantastic. Now a lot of people would probably be like, why not just get a Necro Predator? The Necro Predator figures are very, very good. I missed the boat on the Jungle Hunter Predator and to get one would be about half the price of this guy anyway. And because I'm a Mezco and other 112 scale figures collector, I like soft goods. I like the most kind of realistic look possible. And this delivers what I want as far as that goes. You've got the fabric netting, the microfiber loincloth. You know, the skin has a really nice color to it. It's not shiny plastic. Uh, that's, that's no knock on NECA. I mean, they provide really, really great figures at a really great price point. Uh, but you know, Mezco is the like premium manufacturer of the two, so. That's what we're doing here. God, that's so nice. Look at that. Beautiful paint apps with the metal armor. The the dreads are a really nice, like soft material, so they don't get in the way at all. Really great head articulation. These mandible pieces are magnetic. You can change the look really easily. I actually like this one a lot. I like the not quite fully open mouth. I like the eye paint as well. I think that looks nice single jointed elbows this is cool he's got the little wrist computer it'd be so sick if there were little glyphs on there but i don't know how you do something like that on a something this small just the fact that it can do this at all is pretty cool head pops off really easily we might need to do that to get all of this stuff on him so i believe this slides in like so this is on a hinge right here so that goes down like that and this lights up actually and I believe this wiring is actually crucial to that light up feature so we're going to be careful with that the battery I believe is in here so you take that out that piece comes off and you have your power switch right here it's actually in the on position already um, I, I believe this is a little tab yep okay so you push down on this That's where the batteries go. Now, I don't know if our Aussie friends can get these figures, this, at least not with, that, with the batteries. Unfortunately, I, I know there's a coin cell battery ban in Australia because of a very unfortunate incident where a child ingested one and didn't make it. Here in the US, we don't care about children. So everybody gets a coin cell battery. Boom, lights on. Now, I don't know, I don't typically leave batteries in, in my Mezco figures because a lot of times turning them on is like really difficult and I'm like, I'm not gonna like undo my whole display just to like turn it on every now and then. What about you all? Do you use the batteries and the lights and whatnot? Uh, I guess it kind of depends on the figure. I have Cyclops that lights up and maybe one or two others, but Cyclops, like you gotta take the head off, you gotta flip a switch and I just generally kind of leave him in his pose. All right, so that's on. Now the other batteries go into so the helmet comes off as another magnetic faceplate, and then there's a little screw in there. If you don't have a little screwdriver set, I highly recommend this one. I'll put a link in the description below for it. It's Oriya, I guess is the brand. It comes with a ton of little heads. There are little diagrams of what each one is, and uh, it just makes it really easy. I was using an old like pocket screwdriver for a long time, and it sucked. Now I feel like Mezco did a really fantastic job with the access to the batteries and the switches on this one. It's not so elaborate that you can't get to them. Um, obviously you have to unscrew this to, to put the batteries in, but the switch to actually turn it on is right there as well. So you literally just take the faceplate off whenever you want to turn it on. on. Ooh, this is gonna look so good. Look at that. That's Predator right there. It's so sick. As much as I love this and the way it looks, I think I don't know, I might I might want to display it with the actual Predator face open because it looks so good. Now I know in the display I want him holding this skull. Seems a little more realistic. Yeah, God, that's so gruesome. Okay, so we're gonna pop this hand off. Now, one thing I love about this figure right off the bat is that it's a figure that you can utilize the accessories with really well. Like he comes with a lot of stuff 
and not every figure can like have all of that on them all the time but i feel like this guy can this hand's funny it looks like he's like checking his nails went and got his nails done all right i want to have his blades out so i'm going to swap out this open hand and then we're going to get these long blades in it's cool that it comes with both the short and the long ones and i'm thinking these probably just pop in all right both blades are in trying to pause to really like take stock and just what a what a beautiful paint job this thing has like look at the paint details on that gauntlet yeah this is very very nice figure Let's see he does have double jointed knees so we can get pretty far back and there's not too much stretching or bunching with the netting although it does seem like it does want to stretch a bit so be careful with that we don't get a lot of ankle articulation but there's not much you can do with this design you know, you got to figure this is a guy in a suit and they're like, you know, size 13 feet underneath these like silicone rubber overlays. So, all right. And last but not least, we got to get his jewelry on his trophies. So our predator is decked out. He's ready to go. We've used most of the accessories. That's an interchangeable faceplate, obviously. Interchangeable head. This blast effect plugs in here. All right, let's light this up for kicks here. This thing's a little finicky on mine. It really has to be pushed in there snug to get that light on. But I'm not really a blast effect guy because, you know, it kind of ruins the illusion for me a lot of the time. So I think it looks cooler. It's just like this. And just to show you all, it comes with a stand. I do like these Mezco stands. A lot of people don't use them, including myself, because they do take up a lot of shelf space. Next, we're going to take a look at how we're going to display him and then we'll get him in a cool pose and uh, get him on the shelf. All right, and this is what we're going to be putting the figure inside of. This is an Ella Pure acrylic display stand. I got this on Amazon. Uh, this is five by five by eight. Uh, so it's eight inches tall roughly and you know, five by five footprint. Got a wood like MDF base, I think, and then um, acrylic panels. So the panels come with these like film pieces on them and you peel them off to reveal the clear plastic. Um, this base is a little janky, but they're not usually like this, in my experience, but it doesn't really matter because we're going to be putting stuff on top of it anyway. Uh, but I really like these for displaying figures because, you know, I, I try to keep them all in some kind of casing so that they stay free of dust and whatnot. These give you the ability to kind of create a little environment with them. The nice thing about this brand is that these are actually like kind of a hook, so it really does hold it together really well. Um, so you don't really have to worry about it like crumbling on you when you're moving it like it's pretty sturdy The other thing we're gonna use is this The brand is top fin. This is something I got at PetSmart for $10 You know, they have a bunch of different sizes and pieces and stuff This seemed like it was gonna fit the best for what I want and also just visually look the coolest to me this is for fish tanks and I thought, you know, okay, I could make some kind of jungle thing. And I was like, I don't know how I would even do that. <laughs> and then I remembered you can get this stuff. So I went to PetSmart, picked this up for 10 bucks. I also got this thing. This was $5.99. It's made from cork and it's like a little, you know, log kind of thing. So I just thought it would help cover the ground and give a little texture and I can, you know, maybe put one of his feet up on this and kind of have him in like a, ready stance or like he's climbing over it or something so i've never actually done this before you're watching this all happen in real time so i'm going to change up the angle so you can see what i'm doing and yeah we'll start messing with this so here we are with the beginnings of this there's room for all of these parts but i want to figure out the best way to put them in there so the pose i want to do 
is something kind of like this, where he's stepping up onto this log and kind of in like a ready stance. It's hard to get him hitting any kind of a deep pose though, because the articulation doesn't really allow for a whole lot. I mean, if you kind of force him a little bit, again, I don't feel like I'm gonna be breaking something here. Um, the challenge is that this thing weighs next to nothing. So it's not gonna hold up to a lot of movement. Yeah, that looks pretty cool. Unfortunately, the lack of ankle articulation isn't doing me any favors here. This thing happens to have a perfect little cutout where his foot can go in. So I'm trying to work with that. That looks pretty sick. That's pretty much along the lines of what I was trying to do. And I think it's probably all that this figure is going to accommodate. So I'm happy with that. Let's see about getting some of these pieces. And these two little plants being wedged here is actually kind of helping to hold that cork log thing in place. So that's pretty helpful. All right, I think that's looking good. Something I learned with these display cases that is super helpful. If you're assembling them, you want to do it with this kind of little hook piece facing upward on both sides. So I assemble these three walls and then I leave this front one for last with the hooks facing up because that way you can just slot this in to the bottom here very easily. Push these onto those tabs and then it goes down, locks in place. If you have them, the hooks facing down, you have to get up under and it just doesn't really work very well. So here it is all finished. And, you know, aside from the cost of the figure, of course, the total cost to put this together like this was $30, like right on the, right on the nose. These are $13.99 on Amazon. And then I paid $16 for the pet store supplies. So right at 30 bucks and this thing really gets taken up a notch as far as the display is concerned. This is gonna look really great on the shelf. It protects the figure. Another thing too, when you're trying to pose these figures in a more dynamic pose, sometimes you can risk the, the figure falling over because they do that sometimes, right? The temperature changes in the room, it gets a little warmer, they, their joints get a little bit more loose and eventually they'll just kind of topple. It doesn't happen all the time, but it can happen. And with a premium figure like this, you know, that's an expensive figure to have falling over and it could break and whatever. So uh, it's a really good way to protect them because if this guy falls over in here, he's just gonna boop, right against this and you know, I'll just open it up and fix him. I highly recommend displaying your figures in this way if that is an option that is available to you because it helps preserve their longevity. You know, I don't buy my figures to sell them, but sometimes you get in a jam and you need the money, you know, your dog gets sick, you got kids, whatever. It helps preserve them so that you can sell them later if you need to. So let's get this guy on the shelf and I'll show him to you with a couple of the other figures that I have in this same kind of setup and you can get an idea of how several of these look together. All right, you'll have to forgive the glare here. There's really no way around that, unfortunately. But as you can see, these look really cool on a shelf. So we've got the Aton Custom Constantine here. There's the Predator we just did. Got the Pocket World Toys, the mask. And then this is my custom, the last Ronin 1990 turtle version. There's a video on this on the channel if you wanna see how I put that together and all the parts I used. Very proud of this guy. These are really great for kind of overflow from my theme shelves, right? So, you know, I wanna display these figures in a way that protects them and looks nice and clean and organized, uh, but they don't fit into a display like say, my Matrix setup, right? Or here I have the Nolan trilogy. These are just like one-offs that I don't have more things from those films to display. So these cases are perfect for that kind of thing because I think we all have the sort of wild card shelf in our collections, like the, the thing we don't have a theme for or like just kind of overflow for figures we really love, but like they don't have a home. So these are really great for that. $13.99 a piece. I think they're a really good value. Uh, I want to thank you all so much for watching. If this kind of content is up your alley, I invite you to subscribe to the channel. It's full of stuff like this where I make you know, dioramas. I made this Batmobile on the channel, this Tumblr here. I upload this kind of stuff multiple times a month. If you have any questions about anything in the video, please drop it in the comments below. I'll be happy to get back to you and answer them. At the beginning of this video, you'll have seen a brief trailer from my graphic novel, Count. It's my sci-fi reimagining of the Count of Monte Cristo. That's available on Amazon at the link below. Thank you all for watching. Until next time, keep your head on swivel.